in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Lord, we bless you for that which you will do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Koinonia is the place of hunger. You must be hungry to find expression in this place. This is the place for those who know that there is something more. There is always something more. The character of God is such that when he meets you, he feels your current hunger and leaves you with a greater one. And that's what pushes you back to pursue him. Lord, you are everything that we have. You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. I'd like you to pray just one prayer before you sit down. Say, Lord, you have my all. If peradventure I have taken part of me and shared it with any other thing aside from you, I repent. Lift your voice. This is not the time to look at your neighbor. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord. Lord I will worship you nothing has to me sing I will lay down my idols and thrones that I have made and all that has taken my heart listen there are many things that have ways of captivating the heart of man but Lord we will bow for tonight in the name of Jesus let this not be church as usual in the mighty name of Jesus open up your capacity to receive there is more the Holy Ghost can do in and through your life this is not the best of you Jesus more of you more of Truly more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you. Sit down if you can. Let's get to the word. All about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Yes, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. How about that? About you? Yeah. 
Psalms 139. The last few weeks we've been having unusual angelic activities in our midst. And every time there is an unusual activity of angels, it is because of prophetic things that the Lord is doing in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. Thank you. If there is any if there is any prayer I have for you is that nothing will take his place in your life. If there is any prayer I won't pray for you for a car or for a house or for a husband. Those things, are, I will insult you if I pray for you for those things. When you have him, I'm telling you, you have everything. You see, many of you may sit down, you're wondering why, why does it look like God is all? It's one thing to be born again. But it's another thing to be addicted. Totally. 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 Where you are not just giving him your hands or your lips. But he takes a hold of your life. You're not just saying, Lord, this is a portion of my heart. But he has everything. If he's not Lord of all, then he's not even interested in being Lord. And this is what we seek to cultivate in our hearts. Your intimacy with the Holy Spirit will make many things happen for you in life. See, let me tell you something. If many people ever knew that the secret of what they were looking for is hidden in the person of the Holy Spirit, men will stop chasing after shadows. Do you know that the Holy Spirit made Jesus the Christ? Do you know that the Holy Spirit empowered the patriarchs and the prophets of old? See, I want the Holy Spirit to be real to you. He's not just some textbook or some wind or fire. The Holy Spirit is a person. When you know him, you are the greatest man in the universe. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you forever. Lord, I'll forever be chasing after you. When men chase after so many things, I'll be chasing after you. This is my commitment. That I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. Hallelujah. I have a message tonight that I pray will touch your heart. And cause you to love God like never before. Hallelujah. Tonight I want us to pray, so I'll just teach very briefly. I'm teaching tonight on what I title, The Evidence of Genuine Intimacy with God. The Evidence of Genuine Intimacy. The Evidence. Our call as believers, listen to me. Please listen. Let me say it loud and clear to the hearing of everyone. God's priority in life, listen, his priority for you is not to give you a certificate or a husband or a wife or a car or breakthrough or marriage. He wants to bless you with all of these things. But listen to me. 
his priority is that you will know him. The primary call of a believer is that you conform to the stature, the character, the fullness of the measure of Christ. This is what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12. It was on account of this assignment he gave gifts unto men. Some apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. For the equipping of the saints. That they the saints will come into this oneness. Hallelujah. If your priority, listen, if your pursuit for God is tied to anything other than him. There is a rude disappointment waiting for you at the end of the journey. I assure you. Hallelujah. There are so many people who chase God because of the problems in their families or the, the, the challenges in society or fear because of the insecurity. But you must pursue him for who he is. So our call, write it, our call as Christians is to number one, conform. Conform to the character, the stature, the nature. To conform. And then number two, in partnership with the Holy Spirit to be an extension of the ministry of Jesus upon the earth. In partnership with the Holy Spirit. This is why we call this koinonia. Intimacy. Our intimacy with the Holy Spirit brings us to a place of oneness. We know his ways. Listen. Listen. The greatest thing you should celebrate in koinonia is not the miracles. Thank God for the wonderful miracles and the works of Jesus. But did you know that a man can just have gifts and really not know God. The Bible says he showed his way to Moses, but his acts to the nation of Israel. We live in a generation where men and women are captivated and there's a place for the miraculous. It's God's biblical tool for publicity that men will come and see what Jesus is doing of his acts to know him. This is where the men are separated from the boys because knowing God comes with a price. It's not cheap. It's not free. It will constrain you and it will cost you something. It will cost you to lay aside your ambition. It will cost you to lay aside a lot of things because he will not share his place with any other. But when you do, happy are you because in it you will find life. You will find true fulfillment. Hallelujah. I've always wondered why certain people seem to have a depth of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. When you come around them, you are captured immediately by a hunger for God. Hallelujah. There are certain people like that. They must not be praying. Once you come around just the circumference of their presence, there is a hunger that captures you. You go back crying. Their presence introduces a reality. The existence of a personality. They give life to this mystery called God in the earth realm. When you look at them, the way they speak, there's something about their life. They don't look like humans. They may even be cracking jokes. But there is a oneness. There is an evidence. Hallelujah. There are several believers that claim they know the Holy Spirit. We live in a generation where everyone believes they know the Holy Spirit. But then, if I know Pastor Jakes, there should be an evidence of our friendship and our oneness. Is that correct? 
There's no evidence in the life of many believers that they have genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We talk, we sing, we call his name. Take your place. Take your place. Who is the you? Who is the person you are talking about? Let me tell you something. Many people do not desire to really know God beyond the nominal level of Christianity. And the average Christian in Nigeria has a crippled understanding and desire for God. There's no platform to put a fire for God. The average church in this country teaches us that once you just know the basic principles of God that are responsible for getting life moving on, that's all right. And while that is true and that is good, those are the fundamentals. And sometimes we run into the mistake of camping around the God who was. But we forget that there are other dimensions, the God who is and even the one who is to come. He said, holy is the Lord God who was. But he didn't just stop in his greatness of yesterday. He's ever unfolding. And he requires that men begin to seek him, the God who is. A revelation of that which he seeks to communicate to his people in the now. And that there is more to come. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw the cherubims crying holy. Right until revelation in the Isle of Patmos, John saw them and they had not stopped. How many hundreds of years they were still calling. Because every time they will see a new dimension of him that will compel them to worship. And so it's very sad when you see the average Christian in Nigeria, there is this coldness. I'm not talking of backsliding. I'm talking of a lack of passion and a desire to see that there can be more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many people sit down and we are satisfied with where we are. And even when we sing songs like more of you, when we sing songs like I love you, when we sing songs like show me more, you know, all these kinds of things, we really do not mean it from the depth of our heart. You know why? Because there is no evidence. There is no evidence. The Lord began to talk to me. And he said, son, there should be evidence. Evidence. Listen, if you know how majestic the presence of God is, let me tell you something. There must be a signature upon your life that you are a man of his presence. This is what brings the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Many people try to look for the anointing now without the Holy Spirit himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God designed it in such a way that authentic grace is a derivative of your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's your reward for encountering him. When angels begin to manifest in this place, there is an evidence in the earth realm that shows that there are angelic activities. And so, I, I am very disturbed about a believer who is seemingly born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. Seemingly progressing in God. And then there is no evidence. Hallelujah. So many people sing all kinds of songs. So many people pray for hours. So many people spend time roaming around. But there is no evidence in their lives. If Jake has a perfume. And I hug him and I hold him or I wear his clothes for long. Is it true that when I pass you, you will know? Hallelujah. Shouldn't there be a fragrance of his majesty? Shouldn't there be a deposit, a leftover, a sign that you were with him? The Bible says the disciples were with Jesus to the point that their physical appearances were altered. Judas had to use a kiss to identify who was Jesus among them. They had come into oneness. Koinonia. The Bible says when they saw Peter speaking to the Jerusalem council, they looked at him and they said, is this not a fisherman? But he had assumed 
a level of oneness with his master that he had begun to manifest like him. How many of you have seen two people who are together, a protege and a mentor, and later you see him begin to talk like that person, act like that person? That is a symbol. Hallelujah. You can just hear a man of God preach and you know this is a pastor in living faith or this is a pastor in deeper life. There is an evidence. I'm asking you a question tonight. What is your evidence? What evidence do you have to convince the world that you are truly a man that has the presence of God upon your life? There must be a genuine evidence. If it is true that your prayer is to God Almighty, if it is true that you love him the way you sing, if it is true that you have passion, should there not be a signature in your life that demonstrates to the world the name Christian was an encapsulation that was given as an evidence, a symbol. Certain people behaved like Jesus so much so that they were given a name Christian. Every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have millions of people all over Nigeria trooping to different churches, different camps, different um, 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 places of worship, auditoriums. And you ask them, where are you going to? They say, I'm going to worship. They've been doing that for years, 10 years, 20 years. They've given birth to children. But you look at their life, there is no evidence of genuine intimacy. They pray in tongues. They call his name. They stand on stage and we preachers do it. You say, Holy Spirit, the one I know, the one I love. But there is a distance in between you and the person you are talking about. Have you seen anybody claim to know a stranger and the way the person is talking you will know this person is not used to this stranger or this person is not used to the person he's talking about many people truly do not know the holy spirit because when you know him i used to hear catherine coolman cry benny hinn said it that catherine coolman used to cry and say he's all that i He's my best friend. It doesn't make sense until you have encountered him. Listen, let me tell you something. When Jesus appeared to me, I knew why the apostles loved him to death. Hallelujah. I knew why these guys ran with a passion for God. The Bible says, even in Hebrews 11, that some people had the opportunity to escape, but they refused as a demonstration of their commitment to him. What is your evidence? We sing beautiful songs about his presence and his majesty. Beautiful songs. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. Every time you're singing, people know if you really know the person you are talking about. You can come and sing. You can come and shout. You can come and preach. You can jump around. But I'm telling you the truth. There is an evidence. And tonight I'm going to show you. We'll be examining from, our, from God's word. And I trust that this brief examination will create a passion in us. Because at the end of it, some of us will find out that we need to go back into the place of genuine hunger. We either left God on the way in pursuit for many things. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence. The first thing that happens when you begin to expose yourself to the present and the glory of God. In the glory I will stand. I will stand and lift my hands. In the glory I'll receive every you have for me 
It's in your glory I will stand Lord, I will stand and I will lift my hands in your glory I'll receive every miracle that you have for me so take my heart And mold it. Take my mind. This is my prayer, Lord. Transform it. Take my will tonight. Conform it to yours. To yours. Oh, Lord. This is our prayer tonight. Take our hearts and mold it. Take our minds, Lord. Transform it. Take our will. Conform it to yours. To yours. To yours. The Bible calls him, it says that God is light. And in him there is no shadow of turning. So when you truly step into the light of his glory, listen. The first evidence, listen, is that there is an exposition of the true state of your heart. There is an unveiling, there is a revealing of who you truly are in the light of him. Until you go to his presence, whatever you call yourself, you are telling lies. His presence, the Bible says that he is the revealer, the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Until you have encountered the glory of God, you truly do not know your true state. Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, Although a prophet, I saw the Lord. He said, when I saw the Lord, I saw him high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. And the Bible says, when Isaiah saw these things, he said, woe is me. If anyone had told him before that encounter that woe is you, Isaiah, you would have insulted the person. But the glory of God reveals the true state that men cannot see, that pulpit can hide. Are you listening to me? That suits can hide. That grammar and English can hide. The glory of God opens up the true you and reveals to you the true state of your heart. This is how you know one who is a man with intimacy with the Holy Ghost. He exposes the state of your heart and brings you to a point where you find out that you truly are inadequate without him. Regardless of what your revelation of your authority is, you come to a point where you realize that God, if you do not have mercy on me, then I am a dead man without you. This is what brings these kinds of songs. All about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus. For many years I was preaching, doing great things, signs and wonders and miracles. But the day Jesus appeared to me, I think for over a period of one year I was not myself. It was as if I was the most filthy person on the earth. Now it's impossible to describe some of these things. His majestic presence. When you stand before him and see him in the beauty of his holiness. His majestic presence. It does something to you. You will never be the same. Let me tell you something. No matter how hardened you are. No matter how hardened you are. 
the human spirit was designed to respond to the majestic presence of its maker. And if you truly encounter his presence, something will happen radically in your life. This issue of coming to church and loving God and not seeing a need for change and adjustment is a sign of the absence of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Psalms 139. Let's look at a few scriptures. I want to be very brief so we can pray. This is not a teaching, really. It's just an exhortation. Psalms 139 verse 23. The psalmist, a man who we know to be a man of his presence, had this to say. 139 verse 23. Search me, O God. Stop. Look up. Do you know what it takes for a man to open up himself and say, God, probe me. In this country, when they told politicians that they want to probe them and find out their accounts, did they agree? You know the level of honesty and brokenness it takes for a king to open up himself before God and say, Lord, search me. He says, search me, O oh God. I'm not hiding it from you. Search me. People can call me names. People can call me a great person. But before you search me, this is an evidence. An evidence of genuine intimacy with the presence of God. That consistently you are aware of your inadequacy. Not unto guilt and condemnation. Are you listening to me? But unto a passion imparting upon you reverence and genuine respect for his majesty. Is that an evidence in your life? If that has not happened in your life, then you see that there is no genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit like we claim. There is no hiding it. This is a clear universal litmus test. It should work for everybody. Because the more you see him, the Bible says you are changed. But for you to be changed, God will show you your present state and compare it with his own. And you will be compelled. Man only embraces change if you show him that what he's about to embrace is greater than what he's living. Otherwise, he will not live it. Hallelujah. So you must see a higher light. The Bible says when Saul was on his way to Damascus, full of passion, he was going to go and kill the Christians. The Bible says a light. A light appeared to him. In an instant, Saul said, Lord. He called him Lord. That's the byproduct of an encounter. That a man who has been hardened, who went to collect permission to kill people in a moment. This is what happens when an unbeliever comes to sit down in a place. If that environment has genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it should not leave that person the same. You see the reason why many Christians do not have a genuine fire for God? We sit around unbelievers and there is no sign whatsoever. So, it's either God is not there or there's something wrong with us. Hallelujah. Jesus met the Samaritan woman. Just sitting with her in a little conversation. What happened? The glory of God wrapped her in such a way and a manner. The Bible says she even forgot about the issue of fetching water and ran to the city and began to say, come and see a man who has told me all about you. The presence of God. The glory of God. A symbol that your heart is open at all times and you say, Lord, search my heart. In other words, I'm ready to listen to anything you tell me. If you tell me that there is lust hidden in my heart is true, you are not a liar. If you tell me that there is a state of wickedness hidden in my heart, you are true. Hallelujah. It takes a level of genuine brokenness and love for God to come to a point where God can probe your life and you are not ashamed of what the result of his findings will be. Because we live in a world of psychophancy and lies. Are you listening to me? Men have itching ears wanting to hear only what they want. It takes men who love God genuinely. Especially for those of us in ministry. When you are in ministry, a lot of times our churches are full of liars and psychophants. 
Men who always want to say everything. The man of God is stealing. He's a wonderful, lovely man of God. The man of God is declaring a counsel that is not consistent with God. He's a wonderful man of God. The man of God is sleeping around and doing everything. He's a wonderful man of God. Because it's, it takes a level of brokenness. And here the psalmist shows us one symbol, one evidence of a genuine encounter with the presence of God. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. You know what it means? Commune with my heart. The same word that used for a man knowing a woman. Know my heart. Relate with my heart, oh God. I want to know what your verdict is concerning my heart. He says, and if there is any wicked way in me, he said what? Lead me out of it. This is the first evidence of a genuine encounter. Genuine intimacy. When your intimacy with the Holy Ghost is genuine, this is one of the evidences that should show. Let me tell you something. A man of the secret place will never struggle with a habit or challenge for long. You watch him. You see something you don't like in a few months, it's gone. That's a symbol that is a man that understands the power of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Because if you truly have a secret place and you have ears to hear, because some people don't have ears, the Bible says, he that has an ear, that means some people don't have it, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Many of us have been so hardened towards the dealings of God. Every time we go to pray, listen, and you see, this affects your kind of prayer. We must graduate from this childish, need-driven Christianity and step into a place of genuine maturity that will bring us power and grace. God, I pray for myself. I pray for my mother. I pray for my father. I pray for my this. I pray for my dad. Lord, do this and that. If my auntie doesn't give me money, she won't sleep. I command arrows of restlessness. What kind of thing is that? That's the average petition of the church. Listen, let me tell you something. If that is the kind of heritage we want to pass to our children, then the church is going to have a serious problem in the next five to ten years. Hallelujah. John Knox prayed over Scotland and he turned and was not talking about himself. He said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. This is someone's prayer point. Give me Scotland or I die. That's a level of brokenness and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Where God's own need becomes your driving force, not, no longer your own. You have so traded away your personal desire and passion to take up that of his majesty. And that becomes your prayer point. All you are concerned about in the place of prayer is, Lord, what is your heartbeat? And I will run in synchrony. Hallelujah. You go and read many books that are written on prayer. Very few of them are written on prayer for mature believers. Most of them is just how to get your needs met. Which is wonderful. But let me tell you something. You cannot tie your pursuit for God on just your needs being met. No. God is bigger than that. This is the reason why many people's Christianity does not last. Hallelujah. One day you are checking an album and you see your father's picture. And you see that he was the prayer secretary of one fellowship in 1971. And there's the man in the beer parlor now. What happened? Because the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Faulty foundation. Christianity that is a, a derivative of hunger, not genuine passion. And that's the platform on which many altar calls are made in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And so we tell people, come. This is an end to all your sorrow. Listen to me. I hope you know, I believe in the works of Jesus Christ. I believe in the blessings that come. We preach it here. But this is not God's priority. God's priority is that men will come out of a sincere need for God in their lives. That's the kind of salvation that will last. When you tell someone to come and you are giving him a bet that after six months, his life will change and he gives his life to Christ and there is 
Someone in their family dies after two weeks. He begins to question your, your bait to the kingdom. Hallelujah. And you promise the person that the wait is five or six carryover courses. And his final result came out and we were still on the board. And he has to take it again. At that point, the person does not see a need to pursue God again. You see that? Because you have, you have brought God to be an errand boy whose job is to go and bring things according to our laws. And those are the kinds of people. The Bible says that God cannot commit the true riches of heaven because they will disappoint God. They are the kind of people that will never walk in authentic power. You know why? It will destroy them. Hear me. I tell you the truth. If you truly, truly want to walk in glory, you must open up your heart for God to search. I do this all the time. People call me names. People say a lot of good things. Thank God for that. I receive text messages all the time. Sometimes I pick up the text messages and I drop it on the floor. And I lie down on the carpet. I say, Lord, this is deceitful because it's not true. Affect my life. Breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. That you refuse to let... See, at that point, the words and the commendations of men have no hold over your life again. Whether they call you bishop, stand. Or apostle, stand. Or prophet, stand. Or whatever it is. Those things have no hold over you. That means he has had your heart. Lord, I give you my heart. Many people gave him his hands. Some gave him some fingers. Some gave him one part of their ears. The other part is in Babylon. One has entered. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. See, those that wrote these songs were not looking for money. They were not trying to produce album to look for money. They had a genuine passion. And out of the overflow of their personal hunger, they wanted to infect the world with that hunger in an attempt to bring men to the realm that they were relating with God. But right now, we have all kinds of people singing these songs. And you know that their hearts are not open. Let me tell you something. The first evidence of an open heart is the complete destruction of pride. The first evidence that you have opened up your heart. Because pride is usually hinged on something you know or you can do. The moment you open your heart, the first thing God does is to kick out anything that is not him. Have your way in me. That you open up your heart and say, Lord, men call me a great man, but what is your, what is your analysis? Hallelujah. Men call you a great servant of God. Men call you a great this and that. Great this and that. You see, let me tell you something. In all sincerity, I know I can't stop it. But I fear greatly when people begin to give all kinds of commendations. Because those things can be deceitful. Listen, the greatest enemy of success is the last one you had, not failure. Failure has never made anybody a failure. Failure always gives you reason to move higher. But the last success you had brings about complacency and a sense of relaxation. Any man who is a man of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there is always more. You are always dissatisfied with where you are. And there is a genuine passion to rise higher. It's all about you, Jesus. Whether on stage, whether as a celebrity, he's got your heart. You are not saying, Lord, let me keep my heart with you like a bank. And when I get to a point where I feel I do not need you, I come back and I say, Lord... That heart I gave you, is there any? Can I give you money and collect the heart? We 
will your Christianity last in the face of honor? Will it last when all your financial needs are met and 80% of your prayer request is gone? Will it last when the husband finally comes now? Will it last when the child... Do you know that for many people, the lifetime of their Christianity is when they receive a, re a result. The moment a result comes, that's it. No more hunger. Hallelujah. One of our dear ladies in this place was speaking with me a few days ago and was telling me that while she was on campus, she was the one who was wayward and not serious. And there was a fiery sister. When I say fiery, I mean genuine fire. She was the one who used to hold her hands and say, go and pray. Go and do this. Go and do that. And she told me, she said, do you know this lady right now? That she went to her house and she saw another man. Married man. Big man with his wife. Alive and healthy. Nothing has happened. The wife is at home with the children. Hallelujah. And her small house, the man came here to visit her. What suddenly happens to a... Do you know the level of fall it takes for you to forget where you started with God? That's a level of absence of intimacy for a long time. To a point that the Bible says your conscience has been seared with fire. That a man falls from a great height to an extent that you who was making a vow... You see, that's why when you say, Lord, I live for you, God will say, I'm not yet sure... I'm not yet sure. Open up your heart. Many of us have tendencies that are enshrined in our heart. The day one million enters your hand, God will have to use prophetic words to beg you and say, remember, I'm alive. Many of us have not tasted honor. You don't know what it means for people to hold your Bible and move around and say the man of this and that and that and that. And you are like, so there is a possibility to live a higher level of life like this. Can God still find your commitment? Will money or fame or power or any of these things affect your prayer life and affect your sacrifice? Can you still go down on your knees when you are wearing a designer's of one million? You say, Kai, this carpet is rough. The same carpet you knelt down in to bring you the grace and the breakthrough. When you were taking Gary, and adding all of this, you had energy. But now you eat chicken, you take pasta and every kind of thing. Italian dishes. Those Italian dishes wiped out the presence of God from your life. The Bible says, whose God is their belly? Take what I'm saying very seriously tonight. Because the kind of church we have is the type that if God does not bring breakthrough after one year, many Christians are leaving him. They are packing their load. God is like one of the many things they are trying Hallelujah. You know, there's this game people used to play. Ladies, I pass here, no way. I pass here, no way. So people pass different things. And then they came to Jesus. I pass here, once there's no way, they, they follow through. They are looking for something else. That's why people resolve to go to herbal medicine when it looks like. It's a sign. See, it's a depth of your conviction. When you try and try, they say, Kai, come home. Come home. They say, let's watch and see what God will do. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my So if you are here and peradventure you became a Christian because of these many reasons, you'll be born again afresh tonight and get serious because that thing you did was not born again. Hallelujah. Oh God, if you don't give my sister a husband after two weeks, I know you are not Lord. You mean it? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Listen, I want your Christianity to be rooted on an unshakable foundation. That's why many of you have seen some of your mothers. I've said it here and here again. 
Many of them loved God. That's why in the height of their blessings and everything, you still see them sing songs. And when there's a bereavement, when, because you see, the kind of Christianity that we are teaching the church is such that, what do you tell a family that has been bereaved right now? I believe in miracles. I believe in raising the dead. But not every dead person will rise up. And you will have to console a dying family. So what will you say? You enter there and say they don't have faith. Many pastors do not have messages for bereaved people. Many pastors don't have messages for people in failure because they have pretended to divorce themselves from those experiences. The, the luxury of the palace have made them like Esther to forget the needs of the people they were called to serve. They have intercourse with the king's meat and forgotten the dignity of holiness. I pray that none of us will become those kind of people. I told God, anything, I've said it, I don't know how many times, and I mean it, anything that you're going to give me and I cannot give you back, I put a prophecy in the air that it should never come to me, never. And I mean it from the depths of my heart. When I say anything, let your mind grow wild, including my life, anything. Do you love him that much? Many people want power, you want grace, but God will search your heart. So number one, it exposes your heart. A heart that is exposed to the scrutiny of God. Tonight we are going to open up ourselves and you cry. Because there are many of us, the way we are going, you may not last in your journey. It's not a curse. It's not a bad statement. But we are not hinged on a foundation that is on Christ. Hallelujah. Write the following scriptures down. You read them. We don't have time. Psalms 51 verse 10. Matthew 13 verse 25. When you are truly growing, John 15 verse 2, it says, He that beareth fruit, my father will prune. So pruning is a sign that you are bearing fruit. Bible says, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. See, let me tell you something, believers. I'm telling you from today and forever, you must dedicate time for what I call soul searching with God periodically in your life. I know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But do you know, the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. I want your Christian experience to be authentic. I cry to God every time. It doesn't make me guilty. It doesn't make me weak. But it makes me strong. Because in my weakness, I'm ever conscious of his power. And so every time I make any boast, I make it out of the understanding that I'm strengthening my inner man by his grace. Number two. And a byproduct, let me finish up with number one. You will find out you are walking in character and in the fruit of the spirit. When God deals with your heart, it doesn't happen at once. It happens level by level. Look at me. Let me tell you something. Come, my brother. You see, this gentleman, listen, this guy can be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? He can be walking in signs and wonders, but there are issues in his heart. God will not deal with it yet. Because at that level, the dealings will be too heavy and it will discourage his journey. Are you listening to me? So God will just keep quiet as if there is nothing there. This is what a lot of believers mistake him. And they think God is careless. Do you realize the Bible says in Matthew, I gave you the scripture. Matthew 13 verse 25. We'll not talk about that because of time. The Bible says that when men slept, what happened? They saw tears among the wheat. And when they got up, the disciples told the master in that parable. They said, should we remove? He said, no, 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 no. Because as you are doing that, the, the, the wheat is still tender. Are you listening to me? And you may not differentiate the wheat and the tear. So if you pull it at that point, you may destroy innocent things. So if God begins to hammer on some things in your life, it may be too drastic and it will discourage you. So God will allow you to continue. 
So you still have a lot of things that are not consistent with the way of God. There's pride, there's arrogance, there's everything, but you are still seeing the anointing. And every time you go to pray, God doesn't talk to you about it. Hallelujah. Then one day when you grow firm enough to be able to take that level of dealing, now you are praying suddenly. You are praying and you hear God begin to tell you, okay, let's deal with this problem of pride or let's deal with this problem of lust. And you are saying, Lord, me, lust. I forgot about the issue of pride or these sins. And God will say, really? Do you trust me? And then God will expose yourself to you. And you will see and he say, Lord, have mercy upon me. And then he will grant you grace and empower you. Up you go to a higher realm in the spirit. This is how men grow. This is what the Bible calls spiritual growth. What many people are doing is numerical advancement in the earth realm, not spiritual growth. They are going around Jericho forever and they are not growing. God bless you, sir. Number two, let's hurry up. When you have genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it will conquer unbelief permanently in your life. Communion is the true key to activating the faith of the Son of God in your life. For you cannot trust a man you do not know. See, faith was not designed just to stand. It's, it has to be faith in something or someone. And the degree to which you know that someone is a degree to which you can stand. Look at me. We have been relating for a while, correct? Week after week, months after months, years after year. Based on that, there are some things I can tell you. If I tell you right now, um, this is my daughter, I mean physical daughter, you just laugh. Why? Because you know me, correct? If this place were full of visitors, and I tell them, come little girl, this is my daughter, they'll say, ah, ah, can you imagine? And you're looking as young as, as if she's your younger sister. I can afford to mislead people based on their lack of knowledge of me, correct? Yes. But when knowing me gives them an opportunity to walk with me and ascertain certain things about me over time, are you listening to me? This is why the place of prayer is the place where the shell of the world breaks forth and releases genuine faith. Did you hear the testimony of our sister? She said she has boldness. Now, let me tell you, that boldness came not just by studying the word. It came by prayer. When you study the word and you go to the place of prayer, it gives you boldness. The Bible says the apostles in Acts chapter 4 were praying. It was in prayer they asked God. They said, grant us boldness. And so the Lord begins to talk to you. And while you are praying, one scripture that you have been studying hits your spirit. And a light comes and there is a level, there is a reality. Hallelujah. Suddenly you are praying or you are in the place of intimacy or worship with the spirit. And you begin to hear certain sound. Or you begin to see signs of angels. Will you ever disbelieve that there are angels? It has what? It has solidified your conviction. You see, one of the reasons why you hear us speak like this is because we are speaking from a depth of conviction. There have been experiences that have crystallized our conviction. Hallelujah. What experience do you have that has solidified your, your, your Christian experience? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Communion is the key to conquering unbelief. It does that by exposing your spirit to the atmosphere of God's reality. You need to experience God's reality to know that he is able. I like that song that says, God is able to do just what he says he will do. But you, listen, you must have a real experience. If your sister has been pregnant, and they tell you that the baby is so big and they have to cut her open. You need a miracle, correct? At that point, a dimension of God is about to be experienced. Hallelujah. 
if it so happens that by whatever supernatural means she gives birth now the next time you hear someone prophesying and say in the name of Jesus we command impossible births to happen will you believe your faith has been strengthened you see how experiences crystallize our knowledge of God many of us lack the sufficient experiences why do we call someone a general and someone a captain what's the difference what's the difference when the captain hears the sound of a gun, bah, he can panic and he can do all of this. And the general laughs. He said, they've even pointed gun at me one day. I didn't die. So all this nonsense you are doing. Let me tell you something. The psalmist says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. It takes a man. Are you listening to me? Whose convictions about God has been strong. So all those things, run to the village, run to this, run to this, eh, let's add Christianity and this. It's a sign that you are not convicted. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number three. The third evidence of genuine intimacy is freshness of insight and revelation freshness don't tell me you are in intimacy with God and you will not have a message let me tell you something when in all sincerity when I hear men of God come on stage and say well I didn't prepare for this message I really don't even know what to say uh, whatever let's just look at something let me tell you in all sincerity that is a sign that is such a sign of lack of intimacy with the Holy Spirit because at every time you encounter the Holy Spirit, there is a message. If I, if I have a way of planning for Koinonia to meet every day, every day. Because according to the syllables that we have to cover, we are far behind. Sometimes people meet me and say, ah, you just finished a ministration. You go for another one. You minister. And then you go and you are talking about different things. And many people do not know that many of my messages are experiences. I share some of them with you to encourage you. Sometimes I'm sleeping, minding myself, having a sound sleep. And then I see things in the spirit and I wake up and God tells me, share it. That's how messages like commanding results and so on and so forth came. These things were not just rehearsals. When you're a man of the secret, can I tell you something? When you are a man of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there is freshness. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of what? My enemies. Ah, I'm quoting the wrong scripture. I thought I'll find what I want in that scripture. Let's go to Psalm. Psalm what have I quoted now? Let's go to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not, yes, that's the scripture, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, standing, sitting, walking. All, they are wrong. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day. As a result, what will happen? He shall be like a tree. That is what? Other trees have to wait for rainy season. But this other tree is planted by the rivers. As a result, it yields its fruit in season. And whose leaves does not wither. Freshness. Not necessarily newness. Freshness. That's why you can hear people like Kenneth E. Hagin teaching on faith for over 30 years and you have series and series. Every time a message goes stale, it's a sign that it did not come out from the bowels of the spirit. Because if it comes out, it will come with a touch of eternity. Even if you've heard it before, it will come with a freshness like the dew of heaven. How many mornings have you had in your life morning and evening many isn't it but everyone comes fresh that's how it because it comes from a realm of eternity there's no morning that will bore you 
You say, Kai, I've had, um, maybe I'm 30 years or I'm 40 years, and I've had so many mornings or many, mm -mm, they come from a fresh realm. Every time you sleep, even after 30 or 40 years, you still look forward to, that's why the Bible tied the message of God to the morning. He said they are new every morning. Freshness. Many of us lack freshness in our life. You hear someone speaking and you know that this is the only message that he said since five years ago. And that's why you hear people talk about the God who was. Ah, I remember we were in a crusade in 1971 and God did this and that. And I remember the Lord told me something five years ago. The Lord did this. What is God telling you now? Did he run away? Say after me, freshness. Whether a man, a ministry, an organization, stagnation is a sign of the absence of the presence of God. There should be freshness. Suddenly, when you think you have come to the end of everything you know, suddenly. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says the path of the just is what? As a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. That means if I look at you, Pastor Steve, in 2000 and maybe 6 or 7, by the time I see you in 2014, I should see some, an evidence in your life that shows me you have been in the presence of God. How many of you have seen a little child and maybe when you came to school or maybe didn't see the person for five years and the next thing you turn and ah, you even see the guy has one small beard and he says, ah, ah, bala, you mean this? Now our children have become men. That's a sign that he's alive. Correct? That's a sign that he's alive. Those that you see them looking the same way after 20 years, you know that there's a problem. Because that's not the normal way people should be. Correct? There's a problem. Maybe a health problem, genetic mutation or whatever, but there is a problem. So, when you tell me that you got born again, and after one solid year, listening to the word of God, praying, engaging yourself in the kingdom, and there is no evidence, there is no freshness in your life. You can't share anything. You cannot lead a small prayer meeting. Hallelujah. There are so many people. After one year, two years, three months, four months, they say, just share with us something briefly. And you want to enter the grass. Hey, 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 God, what will I? I understand there's, there's that initial fear. It's not a fear. It should not be a fear of lack of the presence of God. It should be that, okay, I've not done it before. But when you stand there, suddenly grace will come upon you. If you don't deny God in the secret, he will never disappoint you in the open. You know why God disappoints many men of God? Because they don't know him in the secret. We can come and chorus all kinds of names. Lily of the Lion of the, uh, the tribe of Judah, Lily of the Valley, what and what, Rose of Sharon, uh, uh, Silver or Gold, all kinds of names. My God, you promised me you wouldn't disappoint me. And God is saying, me? When? Asking the angels. When did we say, when did we say, who sent this guy? But when you are a man or a woman of the secret place, you can stand and sing and say, I know my God will answer me. This is why we have the confidence to organize miracle services. This is why we have the confidence to gather people every week because we are certain. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. That's why he blesses us with new songs. If you leave Koinonia after three or four months, you will come and hear a new song. It's a sign of freshness. Some of these songs come through dreams. Some of these songs come through people in the worship team. Some come through congregations. You note any church or denomination or, or, or group of believers. Where God is there, there are fresh things. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Because he expects that his presence should give you a new experience that should produce new things. Freshness, freshness, freshness. Psalm 36, verse 9. Lord, I love your presence. 
I love that song. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your what? What's the other part? At least I'm talking to God, not you. Psalm 36 verse what? 9. For with thee is the fountain of light. See, he said, in thy light do we see light. That means when you see his light, you will have direction. The shadow of God is not black. His shadow itself is light. So he says, you, have, you are the fountain of light. As a derivative of your light, if we are truly with you, then we should not walk in darkness. Hallelujah. Number four, and I'll stop here. The fourth thing you receive or the fourth evidence of genuine intimacy is authentic unction and authority in the spirit. What did I say? Authentic unction has nothing to do with ministry, has nothing to do with men of God. If you actually meet God and his power dimension does not rub off on you, it's not God you met. Find out the name of that person you met because he's a habali somewhere. If he's God, the God of Israel, the Bible says the mountains keep like rams in his presence. The majestic one who with the breath of his nostrils parted the Red Sea and you are spending time Day after day, week after week, his power dimension, that unction of the spirit will rub off on you. That's why you see many people, they don't even know. Let me tell you something. When I began my pursuit for God, I was not looking for power. I'm not sure any of us was looking for power. We used to just go and pray and fellowship. We didn't even know the anointing was on us. I'll never forget Ejimi. When it comes to things like this, I like using him. Demonstration students were in Sunday school building. He had been angry because he was laying hands, laying hands, nothing is happening. And every time you come back and complain, you know, it can be very dramatic. And that very day, we prayed. And he laid hands on the lady. And she started moving back small. You can, oh my God, you can imagine the white smile. He didn't carry that hand away, he laid it there. I saw one gentleman doing it in chapel one day I entered. I didn't stop him. Sometimes just leave the people. It's an encouragement. You don't know how they've suffered looking for that sign. Hallelujah. And so when you touch the lady and she's almost falling, you now move from your secret place and come out where everybody can see and say, now the power of God will move and act all kinds of drama. And God will stop you. It's an encouragement. A day will come, you'll draw your hands and say, oh, that's too much. Let's go back to work. A day should come when you pray for the sick and someone can come back with a testimony. You've prayed for 1,000 people. Nobody got healed. You, you are not in the presence of God. There must be an evidence. The Bible says Elijah prayed. There was no rain. He prayed again. There was no rain. At the seventh time, what happened? There was an evidence. Let me tell you something. If it is the genuine presence of God, an evidence must show. A day will come, you will stand close to someone who is possessed. And without talking, suddenly, you see the demon just manifest. And you say, go, leave the person in the name of Jesus. This is how we grew up. That's why our prayer lives were exciting. Because we're, we're wondering what new will God do today. Hallelujah. I remember that time, every night was getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. We're so happy. I remember one time a Jimmy gathered his, his classmates and brought them, industrial design. Gathered all of them and said, come and see what God will do with you this night. Gathered them and brought them to chapel. We loved prayer because prayer was not this boring thing I see people do. It was, it, we look forward to exciting times. And he was going to pray for them. After preaching a sound message, prayed for them. Nothing happened. They were tired. He tried and tried again. That day when we were going home, Jimmy was angry. He said God would have at least, that he knew what would have happened to their faith. If, even if they didn't speak, at least they would have fallen. 
But today, by the grace of God, we didn't start by speaking over congregations and having the power of God fall on people. We started step by step. But that step was an evidence that encouraged us. And we said, man, these tongues is working. Let's fire on. And we went for crusade. My brother, when we went for crusade, we saw things that encouraged us. So rain had not fallen in that land. And it fell, correct? Hallelujah. Jakes was the head of council in that time. Bishop was our treasurer. We saw the miracle working power of God. Is your Christianity exciting? It will not be exciting if you are not in the presence of God. There's nothing new. God is not speaking to you. He's not challenging you. God can tell you, go and tell Ella that I will bless her. And that's your first time of the word of knowledge. You look forward to that time. You're shivering. By the time you get there, you've forgotten the message. You have to find one scripture. Oh, when you stand before them. You see, this is your Christian experience being rich. Many people's Christian life is dry and boring. Because you don't look forward to any experience. I always look forward to Friday because I don't even know what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes people send me messages. Like Grace sent me a message this evening. She told me how that she saw a... A, a, a vision of the meeting this night. I was so excited. I said, this is the kind of thing I want to hear. That one day, you were challenged in your health and you say, let me try it. Let me not take drugs this time around. If it gets too bad, there's chemists. They are not locked. But let me sharp try. Say, I've done it. Authentic power. See, whoever you got your power from, you will depend on the person for the rest of your life. That's why some people can never live some men of God. Never! Because they have tied their life and their power there. And sometimes pastors will preach and tell people, by the time you leave me, or you go, or you start your ministry, or you do this, your life will dry away because I'm from the fountain that flows to you. Look, let me tell you something. The Bible says, Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it's like the oil that comes from who? The head of Aaron, the priest who is Christ. And out of the overflow of what is in the head is where the body receives. And so your unction should come from the Holy One. He said, ye have an unction, not from a pastor. They can be channels, but the unction comes from the Holy One. Let men and women walk in authentic power. I want to see koinonia people casting out devils. I want to see you heal the sick, doing the works of Jesus. I'm telling you, speaking breakthroughs over our lives, standing to legislate on behalf of heaven. Look at what this lady said. Her testimony blessed me so much. I look forward to times when our testimony on stage will not just be breakthroughs that came as a result of the prophetic declaration, but what God did with our hands. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Say, these hands are the hands of Jesus upon the earth. Filled with the power of the Spirit. With it, I will do wonders. I will heal the sick. I will cast out devils. I will deliver nations. I'm anointed. The presence of God is with me. In the name of Jesus, you must walk conscious of his presence. He is with me. He is with me. This is what gives me confidence. Everywhere I go, he's with me. He's with me. I'm telling you, the word walks, W-A-L-K. W-A-L-K. The word, the Bible says, and God walking with them, confirming the words. There's no disappointment in ministry again. I found the key. It's the presence of God. I found the key. It's the key to the anointing. Is the key to breakthrough. God told me, if you have me, you have everything. I am telling you, out of his fullness, you can speak over the lives and the destinies of people and doors will open. That's why he's all I have. This is why we celebrate his presence. Every other thing is temporal. But I'm telling you, if you have his presence, you see why Moses said, do not let us depart. He said, I know your presence. Your presence brought us thus far. How many of you will pray and say, Lord, do not let your presence depart. The psalmist said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your spirit from me. 
There must be an evidence in your life. Freshness. Unction. Authentic power. That you shake every demon and devil disturbing your life. And you tell yourself, as surely as the Lord grants me grace, I can do it. Tonight I'm challenging you, brothers and sisters. The presence of God should be your greatest asset. The presence of God. Commune with the Holy Ghost in the place of prayer, in the place of worship, in the place of the word, in the place of obedience. You will find yourself walking in realms you are not prepared for. I'm telling you, stop chasing after the things that only his presence can give. Hallelujah. Who would have known that today by the grace of God we'll be doing the things that we are doing for God. Many people saw when we started. Nobody would have known but by his grace. By his grace. Evidence. Your coming tonight is the evidence that his presence is with us. What will men do as the evidence that God is with you? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts 10 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. Why? For God was with him. God is with me. Anywhere God sends me now, there's only one question I'll ask. Will you go with me? If God is going with me, that's all. That's all I need. Many of us do not know the value of God's presence. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. I want you to take it seriously and pray. You are going to say, Lord, your presence. I have left your presence. Many of us only run to God as emergency Christians. Emergency Christians. Lift your voice inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Your presence. My greatest asset. I take advantage of the person of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the power of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the favor of the Spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Rapata Krasta Laka Presecate. Say, Lord, put in me a hunger, a hunger for your presence, a hunger that I will lie down in worship in your presence, soaking in the glory, soaking in the glory. So will you remain fresh, so will you remain powerful. This is a secret I've given you tonight. It's the secret of greatness, the secret of glory, the evidence of genuine intimacy, a life of character, a contrite and a broken heart, conviction through faith. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Grace for prayer, grace for worship, grace for spending time in the presence of God. Say, Lord, open me up to visions, open me up to dreams, prophetic encounters. Make your presence real, make the Holy Ghost real, make the Holy Ghost real. Make the Holy Ghost real in my life. Pray and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call on to me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah. Freshness, unction, authentic power, character, maturity, love for God. These are parameters that let us know whether God is at work in your life.
For many of us from today, you must make a resolve to let his word reign in you, find expression, take authority over Satan. Hallelujah. Now, please keep standing. I'm glad to announce to you that we are ready to commence our school of ministry finally. Come on, you should celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. It's one of the great things God is doing. By the grace of God, Bishop Stan will be directing our school of ministry. It's going to be powerful, four months, intensive weekend programs. Hallelujah. The forms are available. They are free, but limited. We take only limited people. You know that God has called you into the ministry or to be an ambassador. I'm not just talking of fivefold pastor. You know that you have a hunger and you want to learn more, to know more. It's a powerful time. We're going to graduate our students. Hallelujah. We're going to have lecturers from different ministries and different people according to the order of grace that God has given them. It's going to be an awesome time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so please don't be emotional about it and just run and come and collect the form and stop someone who is supposed to. Pastors, whether you're already in ministry, we have people coming from different places. That's why we made it a weekend class. Hallelujah. And it's, it's, it's powerful. You've not seen anything like it, I'm telling you. We trust God that we're going to teach and help our students to become all that God has destined for them to be. Are you happy about that? Stretch your hands towards Bishop as a point of contact. We are praying for the school of ministry. Now lift your hands. Lord, wisdom. This is a new thing you are doing in the house and we celebrate you. He's directing it. Pray for him. Unction from the Holy One. In the name of Jesus, say great responsibility to raise and train people. Say, Lord, grace. Makatola kariasta prandakalato sekosada. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, this will be a place where we raise kingdom ambassadors. Men and women of fire. Men and women who will shake their generation in every area. Ministry, business, politics, governance. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now pray for Pastor Jakes. We've also started our missions. How many of you were in Giwa on Sunday? Let me see your hands. Those who went. Hallelujah. It was a wonderful time. By God's grace, we hope to visit the prisons, secondary schools, police stations, anywhere that can be visited. Hallelujah. We are exposing everyone in Koinonia to practical ministry. Hallelujah. Whether you are, we will focus on our students, but everyone. So we can just come and say one, two, three, four, five. We are going to go and pray in the secondary school. And we say, Ella, you are the one who is taking the word. Grace, you are the one who will pray for the sick. You will do anything you know, dear. If it doesn't work, you come back on Friday. So let Friday will now become a time when we gather together. And everybody will tell us what happened. Hallelujah. How many of you believe in what God is doing? It's a new season for us. And we give him all the praise for what he is doing. We thank him for what he is doing in the house. And we celebrate the hand of God. It's a sign of his presence. That great presence that has been with us right from the beginning. The angel of the Lord's presence. He's not left us and we thank him. He's left evidences in our midst that authenticate that he is Lord. And Lord, we give you all the glory. You're here, you're not born again. You've not given your heart to Jesus Christ. While standing, tonight can be the night inside and outside. You heard me talking and the Holy Ghost was speaking to you. Or you've given your heart to the Lord and at one time you found yourself derailing from the things of God. With all the love that we have, now is the time to welcome you and to call you into a genuine fellowship and a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ and his spirit. Right where you are, I want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly. As the Holy Ghost speaks to you, at the back, everywhere, as the Holy Ghost is talking to you, inside and outside we want to help you come to know the lord jesus christ or you've backslided hallelujah 
as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, don't sit back there. There are people coming. I appreciate them. They are coming. Thank you for the courage. 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 As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, don't sit back there. You need to make a decision for Jesus inside and outside. For one more minute, we'll wait for you. And there are people like that. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, young, old. This is what this meeting is about. Hallelujah. Look at these little children coming out to make genuine decisions. You are not clapping. When you were their age, what were you doing? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Now, look at me very quickly. I want to lead you to the Lord Jesus. This is the best decision that you would have ever made. Lift your right hand, all of you in front. Say after me very seriously. God bless you, brother. Lift your hands. Say after me, Jesus, I love you. And I believe you died for me. Today, I acknowledge that you are the Savior and the Lord of my life. Save me. Wash my sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm born again. I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus. Father, preserve these ones. Spirit of the living God, I commend you. Even to the young ones, I pray that you strengthen them by your power. Keep them, oh God. Let their salvation be genuine. Let their experiences be authentic. In the name that is above all names. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, thank you very much. In one minute, I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just, just look back. You'll see them. They'll have your details and you'll come back. Okay? Quickly, appreciate them. Celebrate them well. Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 